All right, boys and girls, what's up? Um, again, apologies. Second Monday in a row, I can't be with you guys, but I'll be back tomorrow, don't you worry. So for those of you who aren't on my team, welcome back, Darwin Crawford. Uh, I'm a real estate investor and a, and a sales trainer here in Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, this video is for my team. This should be playing somewhere around Monday, the 23rd of September. Hopefully, if you guys are there, again, don't be late. Phone's often in the middle. Cedric, don't interrupt me. And if anyone shows up, to the door more than a minute late, 25 push-ups. you know the drill. So today's lesson that I wanna get into is about focus, okay? This is, um, this is kind of a granular look at tips, tricks, tools, tactics, all these other things that I use when I'm either talking on the phone to a seller or talking on the phone to someone else to try to get a deal done, okay? So today's not gonna to be a ton of theory, it's gonna be some practical stuff. I'm gonna let you know what works for me, maybe some other things that might work for you. Um, the one thing I do really want to touch on before we get started or before we get too deep into this is that all this stuff is designed to bring you focus, okay? Down here at the bottom, I've got focus and that's what your edge is, okay? I want you to think about your average day, right? You're there at your desk, you're doing your thing, software's dinging, the phone's coming at you, someone's eating next to you, there's all these different distractions. Maybe your boss or the company owner's breathing down your neck, yo, why didn't you get a deal done? Okay, you have to learn and to train yourself to get past all of that, okay? Because focus in this game, if you are able to focus and kick all the distractions that you have at any given time out of the way, you will literally be Superman, okay? And it's hard to do, very, very hard. But I wanted to take some time today in today's lesson. So you guys bust out a piece of paper. Let's take some notes, do this like adults. Um, but I wanna share some tips, tricks, tools, tactics, all that kind of stuff that I use that have been very helpful for me in the past. So I'm gonna run through this list here real quick. And then we're gonna go back and talk about each one a little bit more in depth, okay? First one here, got a different color, and I apologize, my markers are starting to die here. I've got a new set on order. But the first one here is have a plan, okay? As I love to say, right, plans can be useless, but planning, the act of planning, is very, very useful, okay? Let me repeat that. Plans can be useless, but the act of planning can be very, very useful, right? So that's what it does for me. For me, it's not as much about the plan and sticking to the plan as it's about the act of making a plan, okay? So if I have a difficult thing to do, a tough phone call, a deal I'm trying to negotiate, I try to just sit down and make a plan because it brings me mental clarity, okay? And distracted minds don't ever work all that well, right? Just, it doesn't happen. As you guys know, I'm fairly ADD, so I gotta do some things to kind of get around that. Uh, uh, on mental do that okay so have a plan whiteboards I don't think I need to explain to you how much I love whiteboards all my videos we're here at the whiteboard uh, this whiteboard here has made me a lot of money it was a $30 whiteboard kit on Amazon I cannot stress it enough I love these things they're a great way to put thoughts down as you can see from how dirty this one is it gets a lot of use but I've been able to get a couple of the biggest deals of my life done with whiteboards. I just, I believe in them, okay? So whiteboard, if you can make it happen, if you can get it from your boss, great. If not, but go buy one, it's totally worth it. All right, monitors. <clears throat> Depending on how your screen's set up, um, you know, I have at my house, I've got two iMacs and then I have a laptop, right? So what that allows me to do is, it's kind of a, a command post, if you will, but it allows me to sit in the middle and have a lot of information, a lot of systems at my fingertips so if I'm on the phone with someone or negotiating, my information gathering ability is faster and better than theirs. And that gives me an advantage, okay? This one's a little bit personal, um, but some people like this stuff on the wall. I'm no exception, right? So if there's inspirational quotes or whatever else that gets you out of bed, you know, kickstarts your day, kickstarts your fire, whatever it happens to be, put that up on the wall, you know? Um, I've got some personal memorabilia down here. Don't really feel like explaining. Uh, behind the camera and a couple of other areas in this office, there's some things that mean a lot to me, right? They might be, they have to do with family, friends, experiences that I've had, but I keep them around and I look at them, right? I look at them and that brings me sometimes what I need to get back in there, get in the fight and get something done, okay? <clears throat> this time is on your side right? I believe Mick Jagger said it best. But 
I want everyone to really realize that time is on your side if you manage it correctly, okay? And what that leads me into is <clears throat> a couple of these hacks that we're gonna get into here in just a second. But time is on your side. The reason time is on your side is that if you are acutely aware of the passage of time during a conversation, you're able to control the speed of that conversation, therefore you're able to control the conversation, okay? If everyone wants to do this, we'll take a little bit of time here. Um, I want Brian or whoever's got this, pull up a timer on your computer screen, right? Just a simple stopwatch that everybody can see. I want you to look at the person across from you at the table. I want you to start that timer and I want you to stare at them for 10 seconds. Don't say anything. I'll tell you what here, let's try it starting now. That felt like a long time, didn't it? I had to look away because my timer's over here, so I cheated. Hopefully you guys did not. But that's a long 10 seconds, right? Pauses like that in conversation can be a game changer when you're negotiating, when you're building rapport, when you're doing anything that has to do with these deals, they really, really make a difference. And here's why I say time is on your side. Because if you're aware what 10 seconds actually is, it gives you an advantage, okay? And I do want to be clear because none of the things I'm putting up here are a magic bullet. None of them are going to allow you to get out there, do that one thing every time and win every time. It doesn't happen. All this stuff is culminated. There's a great book out there called The Slight Edge, okay? And what it means, and I forget who wrote it, brilliant guy, done just amazing things. But basically what it means is it, being good at something or getting better at something is not one giant thing that you do that is better than everybody else. It's a culmination of a lot of very small things, okay? So let's figure, let's continue with this list and then I'll show you guys how I like to handle these types of calls. Decluttering your skull. Again, done right, this is a superpower, okay? What this means is, you know, a lot of people have a couple different facets of their lives, right? You've got your work life, You've got your personal life, which might be in your family at home, a uh, significant other, something like that. Then you have your social life, okay? Those are the three major components for most people. Uh, yours might be a little bit different, as they say, but being able to get the other parts of your life out of your head and just focus on the task at hand is really, really hard to do, okay? Javi, I'm looking at you and you're, hey, yeah, oh, this is Jay, right? That's Instagram or that's your personal life creeping in. And I know you said it's different, but that's what it sounds like. I just have to mess with you a little bit. But you're going to declutter your skull, meaning figure out a way. And this is different for everyone. I use some meditation, some breathing exercises. Uh, I also really like fitness. So if I need to get my head right, I'll drop to the floor and do 25 push-ups because it clears my head and allows me to get back in there and focus. So whatever methodology it is you need to use, do that but come into it with a very clear idea and an open mind that this is my task, I am in the moment, and I'm going to execute on it. And the flip side of that coin is ruthlessly defending your attention span, okay? Um, as most of you know, you know, when I'm in and I'm on, we're focused. We got work to do, we have a task to do. That's the reason I make everybody put their phones in the middle and turn them off. Um, but we are very focused on the task at hand and I apply that to other parts of my life as well. As everyone knows, if you try to get a hold of me outside of work hours, it's very, very hard to do. It's nothing personal, it doesn't mean I don't like you, but my phone is off, or if I'm doing something at one of the properties and it's dangerous, if I'm working with electricity or welding or anything like that, I am very, very focused on the task at hand. It allows me to be good at it because I'm not distracted, all right? Nobody likes to be distracted. So, <clears throat> talk about a few hacks, but Everyone's got these little tips and tricks. Excuse me, I can't even talk today. But these hacks, we'll talk about conversational hacks and then negotiating hacks. Negotiating is covered a lot in some of the books. The conversational stuff I've picked up from other people, but um, you know, it, does, it does work very, very well. So <clears throat> the last one, and this is what I like to think of, is at your desk, right? When you're on a mission, excuse me. When you're on a mission, right? You're on a mission to close some deals, talk real estate, get a contract signed, get that next commission check. I consider my desk my command center, okay? So when I'm there, 
I got everything I need right at my fingertips, okay? Maybe you like to sit at your desk, maybe you stand up at your desk, maybe you like to walk laps around and talk on a headset, maybe you, I don't know what it is you do, but the way I look at it is my desk here, I'll show you guys in a minute, it's kind of messy right now, sorry. My desk is the command center. So when I sit there, I have everything I need right at my fingertips, and I take some time to prep that, all right? So we're gonna go a little bit more in depth there in just a minute. Wrapping all of this up, <clears throat> all this has to do with clearing out all the existential bullshit so you can focus on the task at hand, which is getting a deal done, right? You need to relentlessly focus on that and everything else is gonna fall into place, okay? So any of these things that you can do, if there's extra things that help you, you like to drink a certain type of tea, maybe you're a coffee person, or, you know, maybe you like to meditate, maybe you like to stand on your hands for just a second, you know, whatever it is you're into, but anything that you can do to focus is really gonna help, okay? So, let's dive into a few things here because I know we've got a little bit of time and I want everyone to kind of explore this with me. So, <clears throat> starting off, have a plan, all right? So having a plan means just that. If I'm gonna take an important phone call or one of the most common scenarios where you really need to have a plan is a renegotiating deal, okay? Those of you who know me personally, you know that renegotiating a real estate deal is one of my favorite things to do. I love negotiation. I love it, I love it, I love it, okay? But there has to be a reason and you have to have a plan going in. So if we're gonna go with have a plan, sketch this out over here, you know, I would literally put something on my whiteboard just like this and I would say plan. And we're going to say, let's say it's for a property that I'm working on. So 123 Main Street, right? So 123 Main. And I would write out a conversational plan, okay? So if I have to call Mr. Jones, who's the owner of 123 Main Street, and we're under contract for $200,000, and I need to shave 15 or 20 grand off of there, so let's call it a 10% cut in order to make the deal workable. I'm gonna sketch out all the bullet points of that conversation as to why that needs to happen, okay? I'm gonna put notes over here, right? So this is gonna be information about Mr. Jones, right? His wife is Mrs. Jones, his dog is Doggy Jones, his son is Bobby Jones, his daughter is Sally Jones, Bobby plays baseball, Sally does gymnastics, whatever it happens to be, okay? And I am generalizing here a little bit, but the point being is that when I have a plan, that conversation is already planned out in my head and I can look at it, right? It's very important to have visual. So we're gonna talk about the building. We're gonna talk about the kids. We're gonna talk about his pain, right? We're gonna talk about all of these things, but I have them written down. And what this means is that I am in control of the conversation, okay? This is no different than a sales call, right? When you want to cover X, Y, and Z in a sales call, write it out. Here's your plan. Have a plan, okay? I really, really believe in this stuff. It might be something as simple as you sketch it out on a piece of paper. Back when I didn't have a whiteboard, I would use a yellow legal pad because I'm left-handed, so I hate the regular spirals. But I would plan this whole conversation out, and if there's material facts or notes that I need, you know, let's say that... I need this building for cheaper because the roof is bad, okay? So in my notes over here, I might say roof equals 20K, right? Meaning I might have a bid or a quote for a $20,000 roof estimate and Mr. Jones needs to pay that. And I'm very sorry, maybe Bobby's gonna have to take a partial scholarship for college because you, know, you didn't maintain your roof. I apologize, but that's how it is. The point being is that I sketch all of this out and then as I talk, right, so I'll do a side view here real quick. If I were talking to Mr. Jones on the phone, I would be standing and I would be looking here as I'm having the conversation. So going back all the way to the end of the list, the command center, when I'm talking to somebody, I've got my notes here, I've got all my information laid out here, I've got my, head, I've got my headset in so I can talk to them, my hands are free to use computer keyboards or anything else, but I've got a plan and we're sticking to it, whether Mr. Jones wants to or not because I planned it and he didn't, right? Are there contingencies? Do things go wrong? Absolutely. But again, 
we're talking about things that you can do to up your odds on every single level, okay? And this is step one, is to have a plan, okay? So I hope that makes sense. If you don't have a whiteboard or you don't have something else to write with, get one. Get on Amazon, get a legal pad, go swipe a stack of paper from the office printer. I don't care what you do, but have a plan and make sure to write it down, okay? So on to the next step. So step one is have a plan. Whiteboards, we don't really need to go into that all that much. A whiteboard to me is just a place to write things down. As we know, I'm a bit on the ADD side. I like to pace around. I talk with my hands, blah, 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 blah. So for me, a large format whiteboard like this is a beautiful luxury. I'm grateful to have it, okay? If you don't have a giant wall that you can paint with marker board paint, there's ones on easels. There's usually one around every office, everywhere I've ever been to. And if you don't have one, Tell whoever's in charge to get it, and if that person's you, get your ass on Amazon and order a whiteboard. The end. Okay? Monitors. Let me try to swivel this camera here a little bit so you guys can see. So panning over here, sorry there's some glare, there's my timer, there's my other computer, and I don't have my laptop set up, but those are monitors, okay? So what that's going to be is that's the setup that I have to be able to be an effective person, okay? So I like having the two computers there. It is a luxury, I understand that. But to me, it allows me to do my job better, okay? And so if that will help you, some people like working off one little bitty laptop screen, that's fine. Maybe I'm getting old, I've had bad eyesight since I was a kid, so that hurts my eyes and gives me a headache. So I like the big setup. Whatever works for you is my point, okay? So literally, if it's going to work better to have 30,000 post-it notes, do that. I don't care. But set up how you need to get set up. Whatever those specifics look like, you know, make a sketch, do a drawing, Photoshop it. I don't care what you do, but figure out what's going to work the best for you. Okay? Quotes in the walls. I'm going to be real honest with you. Um, I am not a huge fan of vision boards per se. I've never used one. That's not to say that they aren't effective, they just don't work for me. If they work for you, more power to you, kudos, have at it, all right? To me, quotes in your walls are more about useful things, okay? So I consider a wall in an office a source of information. So if I were to sketch out the ideal beautiful office wall, it would have a little bit of personal memorabilia, we'll write it over here, so here's a wall, standard issue wall in an office, right? Dun, 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 there's your floor. So I would have compartmentalized, just like this, things that I needed to know, all right? So for example, maybe you have a map. Maybe you have, let's say that you are in the business of flipping properties, right? Maybe you're going to have ARV cheat sheets over here. Maybe you're gonna have a rehab cheat sheet. Maybe you're gonna have an IRR, if you don't know what IRR means, it's the internal rate of return. I would highly suggest looking that up. My point being is that your wall needs to be set up to make you the most effective person you can be, right? If that's an inspirational quote, if it's a pretty guy or a pretty girl on there, if it's a nice car, if it's a picture of a beach, I don't care what it is. But whatever's on there needs to be on your wall along with information so that every time you're looking at it, you're finding your happy place, right? It gives you that edge that you so, so, so desperately need in this business because it is competitive. And again, you add all this little stuff up, it's gonna to start to make a difference, okay? So you might even go so far as say, you know, whiteboards in the middle. So white BD, so whiteboard. Then you have all this information around it, down here, down here. Maybe you got some personal stuff here. Maybe you got a picture of a supermodel here. Wow, look at the supermodel, she's super hot. That's my amazing artwork. The point being, whatever you need to do to set that wall up, put it up there and use it. Nothing drives me crazier than watching any one of you or any other investor with all this beautiful stuff on their wall that could be so useful, that could help them kick some ass on a call, and they're doing this at their desk, right? Nobody wants to watch me do this. I'm losing my hair, right? Look up, look at the wall. You've put this together, now use it, okay? Use it, 
focus on it and let everything else go, right? And it sounds a little weird, but that's how phone calls are done, okay? Time is on your side. We're back to Mick Jagger here. He's a very wise man. So <clears throat> time is on your side. What that's gonna boil down to is you having a timer. A little while ago, looked over here at the computer and I had a large format timer running because it helps me keep pace on these videos and helps me keep pace in conversation with people, okay? So I'll give you a great example of why I like a timer. Uh, last week, I was unfortunately having to negotiate with a couple of different lawyers. Uh, we had a tenant that was severely behind on his lease payments on a commercial property. We're talking about roughly eighteen dollars or $20,000 worth of rent. The exact amount I forget, but it was a lot of rent, lawyer fees, the whole nine yards. So we had this big conference call to try to hash everything out and to see whether or not we had to sue this guy or not. So we had his lawyer involved, we had our lawyer involved, it was, it was tense, there's a lot of money on the table. And when I did this phone call, I went in, I went down my list, right? I had a plan for what I wanted. I talked to the partners that I was representing in the negotiation at that point, for, asked them what they wanted, told them they could listen in. But the first time I heard a peep, I was hanging up. And I went through and I whiteboarded what we needed. So I had, a, I had a visual there, I had a plan to stick through. But one of the biggest things that helped me in this negotiating situation was time, okay? And it wasn't time as in months or years or days or anything else, but it was having a timer that I could look at while I'm on the phone, engaging people's reactions and the speed at which they respond to things, okay? And it seems simple, but it's very powerful, okay? Three second pauses are, feel way different than a five second pause, and it feels way different than a 10 second pause, right? The cool part is, if you put that timer up, that's your tool, right? So time is on your side. If you put that timer up, it gives you another advantage over the other person. Because I'd, I'd be willing to bet a lot of money, a lot of the commissions that I've made, that the other person on the other end of the line does not have a timer running on their screen, right? So when you pause, when you put in those theatrical pauses, when you're working towards a goal, when you're trying to grind them down on something, time's on your side. It's a beautiful thing, right? But they're literally free. Just Google it. Large format, free timer. Boom, you get 100,000 hits or whatever Google does, okay? They work really, really well. They work on almost any type of sales and negotiating and I highly, highly recommend using them. And frankly, you're an idiot if you don't because they don't cost any money, okay? Decluttering your skull, all right? This one might be a little bit long but I think it's one of the more important parts of this video in that <clears throat> the ability to focus, and I hate to even say this, but as the world speeds up, right? As things get faster, our phones get faster, the internet gets faster, the clutter that is very, very distracting to a lot of people. You know, think about it this way. Think about the last homeowner that you talked to, right? Even if they're retired, the telephone's ringing, Judge Judy's going on the TV, maybe there's a baby or a grandkid screaming in the background, there's a dog out back, Instagram's going off, you know, Facebook's going, all the social media, it's just, it's chaos, it's absolute chaos. My life is no different, I'm sure yours is pretty much the same. The younger, they, the younger you get, the quicker the social media happens, right? Insta, Snap, all of these ones, Quick, 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 quick. And it's all coming at you at once. And then you wake up one day and just go, oh my God. I'm gonna throw my phone in the ocean and just go, okay? So decluttering your skull right here. Most people, myself included, have a process by which they can relax, right? They can get everything else out of their head and they can focus on one important thing, okay? Whatever that process looks like for you is fine. I will tell you mine. So when I get up in the morning, stay away from electronics. I'm usually up pretty early, um, 5, 5.30, kind of depending on what the internal clock's doing. And I go out back behind my house. I have a nice pool and palm trees and it's amazing. And I'm, what I do is I go out and I watch the sunrise and I do a small gratitude exercise. So wow, it's so awesome that I can wake up in a place like Arizona 
look at these palm trees as the sun comes up. It's beautiful. I can hear the fountain going in the pool. My life is amazing. I'm just, I'm very grateful for it, okay? Before I sit down to do any type of work, anything else, I typically like to do a little bit of meditating. I'm not very good at it, but I'm trying to get better. And then I also do a little bit of exercise, okay? So maybe I'll do a few kettlebell swings. Maybe I'll do some push-ups. Maybe it's something as simple as stretching out. And then take a couple minutes just to clear my head. Play with the dog. Talk to my girlfriend a little bit about nonsensical things and just kind of clear my head. And then deep breath and I'm into it, okay? But what it is, is it's a repeatable process. So when I say declutter your skull, everyone get that same piece of paper back out. Hopefully you haven't put it away. But what I want you to do is I want you to write down five things that you could do in a row which would help you get back to a good place, right? So if you come to the office, the rent's due, the car payment's there, maybe you had a fight with your boyfriend or your girlfriend, your wife, your dog, your cat, your dog, I don't care, right? But what is something that you can do to reset and to focus, take a deep breath and just pull all the junk out of your skull, okay? You wanna pull it out of there so you can focus on what you're doing, right? And for me, I have to have a repetitive series of tasks to get that done. Maybe you're different. Maybe you have the Zen-like focus of the Dalai Lama, in which case I'm very jealous. Please tell me how you do it. Definitely write that down. But I do want you to write that process down. And going back to quotes on the wall, if you have a five-step process, right? So during the day, if I need to do this, I typically, five steps, we'll write it down together, right? So I would say push-ups, stretch, I would do a happy thought. The other thing you could do there is gratitude. Breathing. And then go. All right? So those would be my five. So if I had a bad call, whatever, it's like, whoa, shake it off. Hit some push-ups, right? Get the blood flowing a little bit. Stretch, do whatever it is you need to do. Again, this is yours. Write it down, whatever you need to do. I would do a quick little exercise about things that make me happy or things that I'm very grateful for. Um, you know, I think it's amazing that I've had, I've had great people in my life who have helped me come up in the real estate business and make money. I'm very grateful for that. I appreciate it. And I hope all those people are doing insanely well right this second. I hope their lives are full of sunshine and puppies and money, right? Wonderful. Whatever it is you need to do, take a few deep breaths and get back on that phone, right? Get back on that call, get back on that appointment to the seller, do whatever it is that you need to do. But if you have a repeatable sequence, you are almost invincible. Right? You can get back in it if you take a bad call. You know, Michaela, if you're with an investor that just blows your deal out of the water, so this thing sucks, I don't want to deal with it. Your numbers suck, your reno costs, it all sucks. If that rattles you, you can hang up the phone, go through your five steps, on to the next one. And you're back to good, right? You're back to where you need to be to be energetic, to be up, and to get that sale done, okay? And that's what I want everybody to take away from this is decluttering your skull should be a process, should be a repeatable process with concrete action steps that you can do to get back to where it is you need to do, right? No one for me, if I have a real bad one, I'm lucky to live very close to my gym. So I will go over there and I will bang a barbell for about four or five minutes, right? Just some heavy ass weights, do a couple of Olympic lifts, get the blood flowing, you know, very focused activity, very quick, and then I'm back at it, right? I know not everybody can do that, but it also is something that I do, okay? So now we're on to some fun stuff, some conversational and some negotiating hacks. Negotiating, I'm not gonna cover a ton today because if you have not read Never Split the Difference, N-S-T-D, right? And that's by C. Voss. I'll put that down here at the bottom, but it's Never Split the Difference. The guy who wrote it is named Chris Voss, V-O-S-S. -S. Uh, Voss is badass. If you haven't read it, go read it. 
If you have read it, if you have read it, excuse me, go read it again because it's that good. Every time I reread that book, I pick up another nugget. Okay, he is really the kind of the guy I would push everyone towards on negotiating. He's absolutely amazing. Conversational hacks. We talked a little bit about this last week with rapport. So part of it is going to be the pick up, store, and drop loop, right? So where you're building rapport, you're doing all these things. And then this goes back to writing things down, having a plan and a whiteboard. So if I'm talking to somebody and I, you know, we're talking about X, Y, or Z, and I know that they're worried about the roof, I might just write down roof, right? And then two, three minutes later, I can put that hack back in the conversation. No, I understand. Um, you know, it looks like that roof's actually maybe not in great shape. Or, man, last time you were up on that roof, you know, what did it look like up there? All the boots intact, you know, throwing some tactical details, something like that. So these conversational hacks that I like to use are typically come from a couple of sources. Um, I don't know if you can see this book. So this book right here, Blink, is by Malcolm Gladwell. If you haven't read it, I would highly encourage you to do that in your spare time. It's about subconscious decision making, okay? and how people perceive things. So Malcolm Gladwell is a very, very smart guy um, and has put together a lot of this stuff about how people make split second subconscious decisions that they then act on, okay? We don't have time today for me to explain a 250 page book, but let's just say that it's worth your time and if you have questions, come ask me about them, okay? So these are the type of hacks that I'd like to use. What I'd like you to do with that same piece of paper that you still better have in front of you to start writing down some of yours, okay? So we're back here to write stuff down. So conversational hacks, these could be one-liners, these could be theoretical things that you do, whatever, whatever has worked for you in the past, I literally want you to write them down, right? So now we're back here to hacks. So what works? You know, you might have a no line, a no catchphrase, you might have a 7.5 second pause. Right? I love the timer hack. In the conversation, there's nothing better than to throw somebody off their game than just being quiet for five, seven seconds. Oh, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Throws everybody off. It's wonderful. If you're in person, you can also, you can also use silence, which works great. You have to count in your head. I would encourage everyone to stare right about here, the other person, so just above their eyebrows in the center of their forehead. It's very difficult for someone to discern that you're not looking them in the eye and you are able to hold that pose for a lot longer because it's not worrying. You're not looking someone else in the eye. Therefore, it's not as taxing. Okay. It's a great little one you can use in person. Stare here or maybe even over to one side a little bit, right? Focus on the area above one of their eyes rather than directly in the eyes. It's incredible how it works. Okay. But I do, I want you to write that down. So whatever those hacks look like for you, things that you've used before, maybe you've got a knucklehead buddy that likes to go out to the bars and has a bunch of cheesy one-liners. Sales is not a lot different, to be honest with you. If some of those could be adapted, my point is this, write them down. Make them part of your wall. If something works, make it part of that wall, make it happen, okay? And so backing up a little bit, let's put all of this together one more time. So when you flesh all this out, <clears throat> it's really going to come down to this. Your area or your desk, if you can apply all these tools and tips and all this sort of stuff, it is basically going to build a complex machine that I would consider your command center for your job. Okay? So if you are, if you're overwhelmed, if you have a lot, you know, Tim, looking at you right now, buddy, because I know you got a lot to do. What you have is you don't have a command center, right? You need to take the time to build the systems and put this stuff in place that's going to allow you to very effectively get through your day with zero time wasted because you don't have any time to waste. You don't. Looking at what you told me last week, you don't have any time to waste. So when you guys put all this stuff together, your desk is basically going to act as your command center for the front lines of the battle, okay? And Spare no expense, right? The better you are at this stuff, the more deals you're gonna do, the more money you're gonna make, and it's gonna be awesome. And to kind of finish up, all of this stuff right here culminates in giving you the ability to focus on what you're doing, okay? 
You want the seller or the prospect on their back foot. You want to be laser focused and don't think about anything else, right? That's what you want in this whole equation. So all of these things added up are what's going to give you the focus and that's going to give you that slight edge that you need to get a deal done, okay? And it's really cool to do. And the most important part of this is that you have this stuff on a wall because if you don't, right, and you're on that phone and you're, you're living off of raw talent, which is cool, the problem is that that's not a business model and it's not repeatable, okay? So calls are gonna knock you off your game, sellers are gonna knock you off your game, people are always gonna be trying to knock you off balance. And if you have all this stuff in front of you, you can literally breathe, focus, and get back on it, right? And that's gonna give you that edge that you need to get this stuff done. So that's why I really encourage everyone to write this down. And a lot of people think I'm a little bit of a psycho about preparation, but I pick this stuff up from people who do this all day long. They do it for a living. Um, you know, my sister works in corporate America at a really big toy company. Um, they're based out in California and she deals with very large dollar amount negotiations. They negotiate with people like Walmart, Target, CVS, millions and millions and millions of dollars. Disney, it's a big deal, okay? These type of negotiations and sales presentations and all these interactions are planned within an inch of their life. And they literally have rooms, they call it the war room, and it's got everything on the wall, right? They know the names of the people they're talking to, they know all the parameters of the purchase orders, they have sales figures, they have everything. So when you're having a casual conversation on the phone, just like this, oh, you know, we see we're down, you know, a couple million next quarter. It's like, um, actually you weren't, you were, you know, we're showing down 1.2, not two. What does that do, right? But that gives you that edge. You have that information on tap. And if you can do that with what you're doing, right? And on a, on a deal, on the phone with a seller that you've caught out of the blue, or maybe they filled out a web form or you sent them a text and they're on their back foot and you got all this stuff behind you, whack, you're in there, right? And it ups your odds and that's what we need, okay? So save that piece of paper you've been writing this stuff down on. I better see it on the wall when I get back. And if you are, if you are watching this and you're not on my team, take this. If you're gonna try this at home or if you're gonna try to be a better wholesaler or whatever else, have it. This is free to the world. I want everyone to do well. Write this stuff down because it's beautiful. It's beautiful how it works. I did not invent this for the record. I gathered this from a lot of very smart people, but I do know that it does work because I've been banging it out here for a couple few years and it keeps working. So anyhow, in the meantime, uh, about T minus five minutes, you guys can grab your phones again, you know, get your fix if you will, but write all this stuff down, do what it is you need to do. And if you've got questions, everyone knows my email at this point, shoot me those and I will do my best to answer them. Thank you for watching. In the meantime, Go get some work done and we'll see you next time. Peace.